This video will demonstrate how to add a portal system to your avatar. As a heads up, this system does not work for quest-only avatars as it requires the blacklisted parent constraint component. Additionally, be aware that these portals will only work for other players, not yourself, due to the fact that you can't sit in chairs connected to your own avatar. If this gadget still appeals to you, let's get started. To begin, we need a world anchor. Right-click your avatar. Create empty. Rename this object World Anchor. Click the object to bring it up in the inspector on the right. Click Add Component. Add a parent constraint. Add a new source. Find any object in the File Explorer at the bottom. Any object will work. I usually use the Avatar Model object. Click and drag your object into the source field on the parent constraint. Click Activate. The world anchor is used to keep attached objects from moving with your avatar. By setting the source to an object that isn't actually on the avatar, it becomes anchored to the world origin instead. This will allow us to place our portals in positions relative to that world origin rather than in relation to our avatar, and keep the portals in those locations indefinitely. The next step is to create an object to contain the first portal. Right click the world anchor, create empty, and name this Portal. One. This object will contain both the VRC station component that allows teleportation and whatever object you use to visually indicate the portal's location. But first, we need to set it up so that you can position it in the world. Click Portal 1 to bring it up in the inspector. Add component. Parent constraint. Add a new source. Then expand your avatar's armature until you reach the left wrist. Click and drag your avatar's left wrist into the source field. You can use a different bone if you'd prefer, left wrist is just what I went with. Click the zero button. That's all the preparation needed for moving the portals. Now on to adding the actual teleporting functionality. Right click portal one, create empty, and name this object station. In the inspector, click Add Component and search for VRC Station. Add that. Uncheck Can Use Station From Station, as this can cause issues on VRC Station components as a whole. Click Add Component. Search for Sphere Collider. Check the box for Is Trigger and set the radius to 0.1. This is the orb that people will have to click in order to use the portal. We're not quite done with the station setup yet, but we'll have to come back to it after we set up the second portal. For now, let's give it some visuals. You can set it up however you like, but I'll show you how I made mine. Right click Portal 1, Create Empty, name this project Visual. Click Visual to bring it up in the inspector. Click Add Component, search for Particle System. Set the Start Lifetime to 0.5. The start speed to 0.75 and the start size to 0.25. Set the start color to green with an alpha of 50. Set the max particles to 10. Expand the emission tab. Set the rate over time to 20. Expand the Shape tab. Set the Shape to Circle. Set the Radius to Zero. And set the X Rotation to 90. Expand and activate the Size Over Lifetime tab. Click the box to the right of the word Size. And if necessary, expand the Particle Systems Curves window. Click the preset with the line going high to low, this third one if you haven't added any of your own. Collapse the Particle System Curves window and scroll down to Renderer. Click the circle to the right of the Material field and search for Default Line. This is how the portal now looks. 
Now that the majority of the first portal is set up, we can create the second one. Right-click Portal 1 in the hierarchy and click Duplicate. Name this new object Portal 2. Expand it and select Visual. Change the start color to purple. And now we will add what makes these portals actually work. Click Portal 1's Station object. Drag Portal 2's station to both the Enter and the Exit location on the VRC Station component. Go to Portal 2's station and drag Portal 1's station into the entrance and exit. We have a little more to do in the hierarchy to prepare for the programming phase. For both portals, deactivate the visual object and the sphere colliders on both stations. Now for the animations. Click the Project tab to access Unity's File Explorer. If you have a specific folder for animations, open it. Ultimately though, animations can be stored anywhere in the project. I just like to keep it organized. Right-click in the File Explorer, click Create, Animation. We'll name this Portal 1. Create another new animation and name it Portal 2. Click and drag both of these animations onto your avatar in the hierarchy. Click your avatar, then click the Animation tab. If you don't have the Animation tab, go to Window, Animation, Animation. You can drag the tab in this new window to the area above the File Explorer. I highly recommend this for ease of access. With the Animation tab opened, click your avatar in the hierarchy and click the lock icon at the top right of the window. If you don't see the lock icon, click the three dots and select lock from there. This keeps the animation tab focused on your avatar in case you click another object with an animator attached. Select Portal 1 from the drop down menu. Click the record button. Click Portal 1 in the hierarchy. Deactivate the pair constraint. This makes the portal stop following your hand and instead stay in its position relative to the world anchor you made earlier. Click Portal 1's Station. Activate the Sphere Collider. Because the collider is attached to the same object as the VRC station, the station won't be clickable unless the collider is active. This means that, with the collider's default state of being turned off, the portals can't be clicked until you've intentionally activated them for others to use. Click Portal 1's Visual. Activate the object. This simply allows the particle system to start working, letting people know where the portal is. Click the Preview button to stop recording and stop previewing the animation. The way this is set up, you can place just one portal and it will bring people straight to you, because technically, Portal 2 is still active on your hand. Now we need a mirrored version of this animation for Portal 2. Go to the Animation tab, select Portal 2 from the drop-down menu, click the Record button, click Portal 2 in the hierarchy, deactivate the power constraint, Click Portal 2's Visual, activate the object. Click Portal 2's Station, and activate the Sphere Collider. Click the Preview button to stop recording and stop previewing the animation. Technically, these are the only two animations you need. However, I like to make a third animation that kips people off the portal once every second so that they don't hog it, whether they're doing so intentionally or not. If you'd like this functionality, follow these next steps. Otherwise, skip ahead. Click the Project tab to access Unity's File Explorer. Go to whatever folder has your animations. Right-click in the File Explorer. Click Create. Animation. We'll name this animation Portal Anti-Hog. Click this new animation to bring it up in the inspector. Click Loop Time so that the animation repeats itself when it ends. Click and drag this animation onto your avatar in the hierarchy. Click your avatar in the hierarchy, click the Animation tab, and select Portal Anti-Hog from the drop-down menu. Click Record. Deactivate the Station object on Portals 1 and 2. Change the animation's frame to 1. You can do this by changing the number here and pressing Enter, 
or by clicking underneath 001 in the graph to the right. Activate the station object on both portals 1 and 2. Change the animation's frame to 60. Deactivate the station objects on both portals 1 and 2. This animation keeps the stations on each portal active for most of its duration, but deactivates the station every second so that people sitting in it are automatically booted off, allowing another person to come through. Click the preview button to stop recording and stop previewing the animation. Now we come to the programming part. Click your avatar in the hierarchy. Expand the VRC avatar descriptor component in the inspector if necessary. Scroll down to the playable layers section. Double-click the box to the right of FX to open it up in the Animator window. Click the Parameters tab at the top left of this window. Click the plus button and select Bool. Name this new Bool parameter Portal 1. Click the plus button again, add another Bool, and name this parameter Portal 2. These two Bool parameters are used to set the portals on or off. If you set up the anti-hogging animation earlier, don't worry, you still only need these two parameters. Let's continue. Click the Layers tab at the top left. Click the plus button to create a new animation layer. Name this layer Portal 1. Click the gear to the right of the layer's name. Set the weight to 1. Without this step, the game won't even try to read the animations inside. This is a common oversight when building avatar functionality, so if you have problems, double check the weight. Click the Portal 1 animation layer. In the grid to the right, right-click, Create State, Empty. Click this new state and name it Off. Create another empty state and name this one On. In the On state, click the circle to the right of the box that says None Motion. Find your Portal 1 animation and double-click it to assign it to this animator state. Right-click the on state, select Make Transition, and left-click Off. Do the same from Off to On. Left-click the transition that leads to words On. In the inspector, click the plus button underneath the conditions box. Set the condition to Portal 1 is true. In the grid, left-click the transition that points to words Off. Add a new condition, portal 1 equals false. That's the first portal done. The second one is set up almost identically. Add a new layer, name it portal 2, set its weight to 1, create a new empty state, name it off, create another state named on, and add the Portal 2 animation to this state. Make a transition from on to off, and from off to on. Set the off to on transition to the condition Portal 2 is true, and set the on to off transition to Portal 2 is false. One more layer to make, and that's only if you set up the anti-hogging animation earlier. If you skip that step, skip this one as well. Add a new layer, name it Portal Anti-Hog, set its weight to 1, create new empty state, and name it On. We only need the one state for this layer, as there's no real harm in having the animation play at all times. Add the Portal Anti-Hog animation to the On state. That's all you need for the Anti-Hog to function. Last part now, setting up the menus. Click your avatar in the hierarchy. Expand the VRC descriptor if necessary. Scroll down to the Expressions section. Double-click the field to the right of the word Parameters to bring up your avatar's parameters list in the inspector. At the top of the inspector, click Add two times. Change the last two entries in the parameters list to Portal 1 and Portal 2. 
These need to have the exact same name as the parameters you made in the avatar's effects animator earlier, or else they won't pair up with each other properly, and your menu won't have any effect on the portals. If the drop-down menus on these last two parameters do not say bool, change them to bool. Click your avatar in the hierarchy again. Scroll down to the expression section. Double-click the field to the right of the word menu to bring up your avatar's main menu in the inspector. Click add control at the bottom of the inspector. Expand the new control if necessary. Rename this new control to portal1. To the right of the word type, Use the drop-down to select Toggle. To the right of the word Parameter, click the drop-down menu and select Portal 1. Click Add Control again. Rename this new control to Portal 2. Set the type to Toggle, and set the parameter to Portal 2. That's the final step. Bring up the VRChat SDK, and click the Build and Publish for Windows. Unfortunately, you can't really test the full functionality with just the build and test button, as other players need to be able to see the portal in order to use them. If everything is set up correctly, you should have working portals for transporting other players around the map. Be aware that people who join the map after you've placed your portals will be unable to teleport to the areas you've set. This is because an avatar's animations are handled by each computer individually, so when someone new joins in, it immediately places the portal at the world anchor instead of wherever you tried to put them as their computer has no way of knowing where your hands were before their arrival. I hope you've benefited from this tutorial. I've recently set up a Discord channel for help and suggestions, as well as updates on new features and tutorials I'm working on, which I will link to in the description. If you'd like to learn how to build some more obscure or personalized features, I offer tutoring, and if you don't have the time or inclination to learn all this stuff, I take commissions to add features onto the avatar myself. Joining my Discord is the easiest way to make these requests, or you can message me directly at Toolbox Motley, pound sign 0372. Enjoy breaking reality with your new portals.